Welcome back everyone, Sifu Devin fan, Eight Immortals Wing Chun. Uh, today we're going to be I'm introducing to you uh, Internal Alchemy, which is uh, something I practice as a Taoist. However, you don't have to be a Taoist to practice this technique. The reason it's important in Kung Fu is because if you remember back when we first started talking about Kung Fu, reasons to learn Kung Fu, talk to you about the idea of Wu Wei, Wu Wei is another Taoist concept, but the concept is that it teaches you to have instinctive natural reactions that are that are good, that are appropriate for the circumstance. So when we talk from a Kung Fu perspective, that means that when someone attacks you or presents a force, that your body automat automatically knows what to do. So from a spiritual perspective, Wu Wei also exists. Okay, actually it's more important. So what that means is what we're trying to develop through Kung Fu and through this practice of internal alchemy, or Dan, as it's also called, is for you to respond in a natural way that's good, that's beneficial, that's healthy, um, that helps you in the world without having to make that force, without having to focus that, without having to, to go through all kinds of different things uh, to get to that place, okay? To have a natural reaction to things. How does one do that, all right? To understand this process, okay, most people think of uh, kind of alchemy as a transformation. That's that's true. So in this case, though, we're not talking about if you've heard of you think of alchemy, Western alchemy, think about turning lead into gold or something like that. This is something completely different. Okay, we're talking about internal transformation. The only thing I want you to really focus on here is the whole concept. Everything that we're trying to do is to focus on becoming in touch with, returning to what we call the original self. Okay, Zhen Ren is the term means your, your, how you came into this world. That, that's your original self. So, the, before we begin this, you have to wrap your head around one statement that most people will have some trouble processing. Okay, the statement is this. You, I'm speaking directly to you, you came into this world exactly as you're meant to be. So actually how you first come into the world, when you come into the universe, you're perfect the way you are, that's exactly how you're meant to be. So it doesn't matter whether you look at, if you're a Christian, have, I don't know much about it to be honest, so you have a different perspective on how you're created, or if you don't believe in, you know, you're, Atheist also find you think you just popped into the world whatever Regardless of whatever background you come from the fact remains you came into the world the way you are So that's how you're supposed to be okay now from a Taoist perspective We believe that that actually the how you come into the world the original self is connected to the eternal connects to where you come from Okay, slightly different, but the the concept the same. Okay so However, I'm telling you that you're perfect, you came into the world perfect the way you are. So hardly any of us feel this way. So why is that? Why does nobody feel perfect the way they are? Babies certainly do, okay, animals do. Birds, you see them up to sing, singing in the trees. They're not worried about what other people think, just do their thing. Um, babies, everyone, you know, I have three children myself, but if you've ever held a newborn baby, you look into its eyes, you know, it's almost like you can see the universe in its eyes. It's incredible. That's because that's just what it is. It's so connected at that point. Almost people, it's very interesting to see. Everyone wants to hold, everyone wants to pass around. It's treated almost like a god the way it's treated, the way people connect because it has something very special. Okay, so a newborn baby in the world. That's, to my mind, it's because there's connect. you can actually see the connect is so evident. There are their original self there. So, most of us, Okay, so why don't we all feel like that way where a bird does or a baby does? That's because your sense of yourself, in human beings anyway, isn't just how you feel about yourself, how you come into the world, it ends up being shaped by all kinds of external forces. That's okay if you have someone, you know, loving parents take care of you, build you up, make you feel good about yourself. Actually, then you can build on, actually, you know, build on those things that can be very positive. For many people though, in life, 
don't have all those positive things it ends up being often we build you know regardless of your home environment that can be positive but you can still from all kinds of other external influences build one negative thing on top of another it ends up being here's the truth it ends up being that those negative things those become the way that you respond to the world okay that's how you condition how you become conditioned to respond to things and i'll tell you a secret Self-hatred, self-loathing is the root of almost all problems okay, in the world, in your relationships, everything else. It's the, the root cause of the way many people negatively respond and they create all that negative energy around them. That's because it's from how they view themselves. Okay, So that's why this is so important. Now you may ask yourself, okay, I'm trying to teach you something strange. What does it have to do with Kung Fu? actually has a great deal to do with Kung Fu. Um, the reason is, one thing I've been teaching you so far, you know, you're learning how to fight, learning how to defend yourself, also learning how to attack, learning to actually become much more powerful in many ways. So if you don't also work on your spiritual side of yourself, how you respond to people, how you act in this world, all those things to do with your character, then actually, if you just learn the techniques, then actually it's almost like you're giving those demons a weapon. Now actually you make yourself dangerous in the world. Instead of not becomes not a way of peace, becomes a way of something else. Okay, something that has, even though nothing, the techniques themselves are uh, neither you know here nor there, but if you apply them in a bad way, or if you use them to hurt people, I don't even necessarily mean intentionally, but it can end up being the way you use them. You know, I've seen people, they, they take the Kung Fu skills and can put them in a bad, do bad things with it, right? So that's why it's so important. You have to build up both things at the same time. If you have all those feelings of self-hatred, and then that's going to express through Kung Fu, that can express in a very negative way. Because that's why it's important for me. So you may have a different way of, of doing these things. I'm showing you my way of doing things. You can use or not use. I don't expect it's going to work for everyone. What I'm hoping it will work for the people it was meant to work for. That's all I can ever hope for in this world. All right? So that's why I share it with you. Um, the method that we're going to do today, this secret nadan, this is a secret method, okay? Passed down not for hundreds of years, passed down for thousands of years. Not passed down through writing, not passed down, not something you're going to find in Google, okay? This, this teaching. This comes direct, this is from the Eight Immortals. So actually, uh, Lu Dongbin, the guest of the caverns, uh, considered like the leader of Eight Immortals, um, there's a practitioner. So, the, but it comes not just from him, comes long before him, okay? So, anyway, secret method. I could tell you strange, strange stories, but I'm gonna leave for, never mind about it. So, suffice to say, it's many thousands of years old. It helped many people. It helped me transform my life in a lot of different ways help me deal with so many different issues. Um, this is just the introduction today. It's one step, many other steps. Before, just so you know, okay, this one you don't have to move around so much, can be sitting still, but still you need to physically prepare this actual practice, you're gonna be doing the practice now, okay? So um, you need to make space for yourself. So whether it's now, you just had your phone playing in the background, whatever, you have to find a place comfortable to sit. Also turn off, anything distracting in the background, TV, whatever. Um, if, if you find you don't have a space for yourself now, then you can wait, pause video, wait for a time when you do have some time, when you know you're gonna have some time and space to yourself. So that you have to make that space, okay? Some people like cleanse the space. You can light incense or do a smudge or do whatever, you know, is appropriate for you and your background and your space. That's that's great too. You know, I burn incense every day, but you don't have to do, it doesn't, doesn't matter either. Uh, some people, if you have a candle when they're doing this, sometimes it can help because uh, depending on your nature, some people can find their, their, whether you're doing traditional meditation or not, sometimes people can find their attention can try to wander. Um, everyone's different. So if you find it helps, you can have a candle burning in front of you. You can do it next time or whatever, or stop, uh, pause video, go set up, doesn't matter. Uh, but don't have to do that. Don't really need anything except for the comfortable space to sit, okay? That's the first part of the physical preparation. Other part is, don't try to embark on something like this if you're fine, oh, you want, you're, now you realize you're hungry, you didn't know this was gonna happen. So 
if you need to get a snack or get something to drink or go to the washroom, do whatever, it's impossible to do something where you're trying to do internal work if you're thinking the whole time you have to go to the bathroom. It won't work as well. So go do those things, come back, okay? That's the physical part of getting yourself ready. Next part, um, still physical part. We're gonna focus on relaxing now. This is a different kind of relaxation. So right now I want you to let your arms drop down. You can have them face palm up on your, on your uh, thighs or you calm down, however really you feel comfortable. I want you to feel loose and comfortable. Now we're gonna try to sink. Uh, this one you'll be familiar with if you did dance before. Try to feel that energy of pulling up. So pulling up on the back of your, almost like the crown of your head, that string pulling up to make you sit up nice and straight. And at the same time, let everything else drop down. So let your shoulders drop down and then let your elbows should almost feel like they're hanging underneath your shoulders, drop those down too. Take all this energy, let it drop down. You don't need to talk, so I'm talking, but you connect the top, the, your tongue to the roof of your mouth. You can breathe through your nose if you can. You can breathe out through your mouth. So just like we're doing the Qigong exercises. Okay, so breathe in. And every time you exhale, I want you to release a little bit more and relax even a little bit more. It's very important you be physically, you need to be relaxed for this process to work, okay? Next thing I'm gonna have you do, okay? Relax, relax again. Next thing I have you do, let your eyelids drop so that it's almost completely closed but not quite. If you have that candle in front of you, you can just where you can just see the flickering, the light a little bit. If not, you can focus on just almost like where you can just see the tip of your nose, your own nose a little bit and then Everything else you just let drop. So you let your eyelids drop, relax. You're not completely closed yet, but let them drop. If it's turned into a struggle for you, you can close them, but better to have them almost closed, okay? Relax everything else, let everything else sink down. Your hands should feel heavy. Just sink your shoulders down. Focus on your breathing, remain calm and peaceful. Now when you're ready, we're gonna begin what is called the long descent. Before we start that, if at any time, you know, everyone has different reactions, triggers to different things. Anytime it's becoming uncomfortable or bad images or problems, all you have to do to come back out of this, open your eyes, that's it it will be returned, okay? If not, if you feel like you're ready to come the long descent. Long descent is internal, so that means I want you to try to turn all of your attention, you're gonna now turn your attention inward. Instead of the outer world, bring your attention inward, and we're gonna start to sink backwards and down, and our destination here, okay, when you're doing this sinking process, relax, focus on your breathing, bring your attention inward, and you're gonna focus on sinking down and back. And what we're trying to get to is get back to the root, the very beginning of where you came from. That means going back in space and time, you have to sink all the way down, okay? And all the way back. It's gonna be a sinking sensation. Nothing to be afraid of, just remain calm and peaceful. start by moving back one day and letting yourself sink down. Some people visualize themselves, you can actually see themselves sinking down through darkness through a space, dropping down, almost like going down an elevator shaft. Some people feel themselves actually sinking down and you can feel yourself starting to, you physically feel yourself starting to sink down. Relax. Let your limbs sink down and fall down. Let your limbs become heavy. And you're gonna to start to sink backwards and down. Sinking down, sinking back, and returning. As you do so, I want you to focus that intent on going as 
far back as we can. You're actually trying to go backwards in time and space to where you came from. As this happens, many people will see images flashing of things that happened before or people, faces, events come up. As they do so, I just want you to let those things slide by. Don't linger on them or hang on to them. Event images, faces come up, you just slide by, you continue to descend, continue your descent. You keep sinking down, keep letting yourself sink down. Don't worry about a falling sensation. Nothing can harm you here. Focus on returning. Again, fleeting images, just let them slide by. Keep continue to return back. We're going out. Of Focus on going back all the way to the beginning, where you came from. As you get closer, Instead of seeing face, you may just see colors, and shapes, movement, things like that. It means you're getting closer to the beginning. So continue to go. You may find now, as you get closer to the source, that you're getting slower. So you find yourself slowing down your descent. So instead of dropping quickly, you're falling down more slowly now. That's, that just means you're getting closer to the beginning. Eventually you feel yourself slow and slow and slow and then you eventually find that you come to a stop and you're floating in place. When you reach that point, now I want you to let your eyelids close. So closing your eyes in this world, opening them in a different world, a place of beginning. So close your eyes in this world, open them in that world. You will see and sense around you, even if you can't see them, you can sense the walls now of a great cavern all around in the darkness. Underneath you, all around is still, still water like as still as glass, the black water. This is called Lake in the Cavern, the sacred place, like a place of beginning. You can float, just keep yourself floating just over the surface of the water. You take in the feeling, you can feel the difference in the air here. You can feel the space in the cavern. You can even feel the water under, underneath you, even though you're floating over the surface, the sacred place.
nothing to fear here. As you adjust to being in this space, you feel yourself floating here, you'll see even though it's very dark, not completely dark. So in the center, you can sense it's lighter. I want you to let yourself now, you'll actually find you can move quite easily here. Just like you're able to float down, I'm gonna have you now, you just practice doing it. Let yourself float forward. And I want you to let yourself float over the surface of the water towards the center of the cavern. As you get closer, you see the flickering light. This is why it's called Cavern of Wonders, a wondrous sight. You see their flame, there's a flame burning on the surface of the water, right in the middle of the cave, in the middle of the lake. And what that flame looks like, only you can, can know that. That's for you to see, okay? It will be different for everyone. The flame is a source, the flame is the beginning. When we talk about connecting to your original self, okay, this is where you can find find that energy. So now I'm gonna have you go even closer and let yourself float over the surface of the water, close to that source, close to that flame. You can look at the color. Again, it will look different for you than for me and look into that flame and feel the energy coming off of it and all I want you to do now, stay in this space, focus on that energy, absorb that energy coming off of the flame, and now is your chance to connect. So you just connect with that energy, that energy in the flame, same energy within you. Okay, that's your original energy. You can just, just take it in, breathe in that air, breathe in the energy in this place and just bathe in its warmth, let you absorb it. Now that you're in this sacred place, what I want you to try to do is little by little, I want you to try to let go of all those things that are weighing down on you. So we all have things we carry with us. This is your chance. This is the place where you can unburden yourself, let those things go, okay? Here those things will be taken care of. You don't have to hold on to them anymore. You can start to let them go. So don't focus on them, okay? Don't let your thoughts tarry on those things, but when they come up, everyone knows the things they're holding on to, or the things that people have said, the things you're carrying with you, the weight on your shoulders. I want you to physically let them go, let them go free into this space. Here they'll be taken care of. You don't have to worry. So just let those things go. One by one, relax, focus on your breathing, focus on the flame in front of you, focus on that energy and let those things come off. You can feel them just melting off of you. Focus on that energy and the flame being the same as the energy. This is your energy. So same as the one, one within you, same as the flame in front of you. They're one and the same, they're connected, same thing. As you do so, you're gonna feel yourself getting lighter and lighter. 
The more of the energy you absorb, the more of the things you let go, the lighter you'll feel. A sense of buoyancy. Instead of trying to fight that hang on, I want you to let yourself now, just like we let ourselves sink down, let go of all those things holding on to you, let go of taking that energy. I want you to try to build on it, absorb that energy. You should feel that brightness within you. And now we're going to let ourselves slowly. The more things you let go, the lighter you're going to feel. I want you to let yourself slowly rise up and you're going to start to float up. We're going to go back up now, slowly but surely towards the surface again, back to where we came from, back to the present. First, you'll see colors and shapes again, and shadows. And as you rise up, things become more distinct. Faces, memory, cars, building, places, all those different things. Let them slide by. Continue to feel that lightness. Continue to let yourself rise. As you return, you can slowly let your life eyes open a little bit again. So again, just back to where your lids are almost all the way down. I always find when I'm returning, you can all of a sudden, it's so interesting. Some people smell different things. I always can get a heightened sense of hearing. Suddenly I can hear all kinds of stuff in the background that I totally shut out before. So everything suddenly becomes crystal clear. You can now open your eyes. So take a big deep breath. We're gonna do a couple of qigong breaths so we do this. So breathing in through your nose, let your arms raise up and exhale. Breathing in through your nose, exhale. Thank you for joining me on that process. I honestly have no idea whether that worked meant anything to you or not. Um, this was done very quickly because I'm just trying to be able to show you the way to do this. Uh, if you spend your, when I'm doing this on my own, you can spend much longer time doing actually all kinds of amazing things you can see can come out of this. Interesting, before I, before I practiced Nadan, this, I never had visions. I didn't even know what people were talking about, talk about having visions. Then, you know, I honestly opens up a different part of your mind. I've see, i been able to see, experience, uh, amazing things have been revealed to me. I've never had those experiences before. Complete transformation. The last, you know, the one I think I want you to focus on, so many people uh, are drawn to this idea of always, because they're unhappy with themselves, trying to change themselves. Whether it's through, you know, plastic surgery, different, whatever kind of things, always, or taking, you know, trying to change their personality. That, that way, okay, is not the real way to peace and contentment comes through Kung Fu. So don't let, I want you to, when you're moving through this, this idea of Kung, making Kung Fu a part of you, make Kung Fu a part of your life, not about changing yourself. It's about becoming yourself. It's two diff, very different things, okay? The eight immortals, though, behind me in the shrine, their whole, the reason they're, considered call the immortals not because they live forever okay because they became themselves they became them, their true selves every one of them has a different story that leads to that same result okay their unique self each one is different okay so that that concept is what we're trying to achieve so by doing so you can do that you can tap into that then you don't have to worry about the right thing to say the right thing to do anymore that's the Wu way, those things will come naturally. If it's coming from your true self, from your genuine self, then it will always be the right thing, always be a good thing, okay? Don't have to worry about those things anymore. Just like in Kung Fu, when you, when you train yourself to have the right reaction, you don't have to think anymore, it will be the right, will be the right, move the right words for the circumstance, okay? The, really the same thing. So one is more internal, one is more external, but they are tied, those things are tied together. 
So this is one way to practice, one way to do these things. You may have your own spiritual ways. That's great if you do that, okay? As long as you find some way to take care of yourself, some way to take care of your own spirit so that the things you're learning in Kung Fu will be applied in the world, will have a good manifestation instead of a bad manifestation. That's what we're trying to do, create more positive things for yourself, for other people too, so you can help other people too. Is um, One way has to start taking care of, love yourself, help yourself first, okay? If you don't love yourself, you can't truly love other people. It won't work that way, all right? If you hate yourself, you have that self-loathing, that's gonna express in everything you do. So that's why this is so important to me, just have one tool that you can use. Um, otherwise, all those demons, you know, they can take control of things. So that's why Lu Dongbin, the guest of the cavern, they say he returned from the cavern, he brought with him a demon slaying sword. That's the type of thing they're talking about. I have other tools and stuff that I can share with you. For those people interested, some people, you know, this they have their own systems, that's fine. If you have questions about this, I realize a lot to deal with in a short amount of time, a lot to introduce. Um, you, you probably don't want to do it on YouTube. You can always reach out to me uh, on Messenger, Facebook Messenger. Uh, I'm Devin Young Lee Fan. You can send me a message, uh, questions, stuff you're trying to work through, then hopefully I can help you that way and answer, answer more direct questions without you having to put in comments, okay? Um, in the meantime, I hope to some use to you. Um, I hope you find some ways to, if it's not this, that's okay. I'll find some other ways to keep, keep take care of yourself. Um, and I hope you continue this, this if you're Kung Fu, you continue to, to learn new skills. Uh, I'll be bringing back more physical things next time. We'll be returning in different ways to this because I have some other tools I want to share with you as well. Either way, uh, stay strong, keep practicing. Until next time, we'll see you back. Eight Immortals Wing Chun.